Hey everybody, it's Dolores Reset Love. I'm on here tonight and it's like midnight. Like normally I'm not on here at like the midnight hour, but I'm on here today, y'all. Um I really wanted to talk about some things um and just kind of fill you guys in on a little bit. I know I've been kind of missing in action for a little bit and I got good reason. <laughs> you know, I always had, I always had good reason uh to be in my A, but um i'm back on the scene and i just wanted to catch you guys up on a few things before we get started i want to go ahead and pray lord god i thank you so 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 much lord god just for being my god for being my father thank you for loving me when no one else did god thank you for loving me in my weakest moments my most vulnerable moments God, thank you for loving me in my most broken moments, God. Thank you for loving me, Lord, in my most unlovable moments, God. Thank you for loving me. Thank you for being with me. Thank you for never leaving me, God. I thank you for staying with me through it all. God, it truly, truly means everything to me, and I just say thank you. And right now, Lord God, even as I pray, Lord God, I decrease that you would increase Lord, it's not my will, but Lord, please let your will be done. Let my tongue be the pen of a ready writer. Lord God, let none of my flesh be glorified because no flesh can glory. Hallelujah in your presence anyway. God, I just want you to get the glory. It's not about me, God. It's man. It's a much bigger picture. It's way bigger than me and it will always be bigger than me. Um, Lord God, so I pray that lord whatever you want to be said will be said i pray that it falls or, or, or it goes to the ears that need to hear it the most lord god have your way on this video lord let your will be done i pray in the name of jesus and i say thank you right now in jesus name amen okay guys um so just to catch you guys up so um i've been in my a for a minute um and i told you guys not too long ago about how i had a situation with my car and i felt some type of way because i couldn't call on anyone outside of my family i really i that thing messed me up and i felt really really just alone i felt really alone more than anything i mean i was grateful for my family thankful for my family who were there and who could help but i felt so alone that i didn't have anyone else that i could call on um it just kind of messed me up a little bit um but remember i was telling you guys that um god has me in a season where like he has me to myself where he has me to himself and um you know those like i said who would be outside of family who i would be able to call on i can't call on like it, it, not just for help but just for anything like he has literally repositioned he has repositioned people um that were in my life he has removed people from my life and for me this was very humbling um for me this was not a voluntary uh, like a voluntary thing on my part like going into this season was very involuntary and literally the lord had to like drag me into this season with me kicking and screaming and all of that because i was not really here for it you know um, the few people that I did have in my life, um, I want, you know, I wanted them in my life, you know, to say the least. And, um, they're like, I moved them, but like, that's not the case. They're gone. You know what I mean? So for me, that was really, really tough to accept because you're looking at someone who over the years, like I've, uh, I've never just had a whole bunch of friends, you know what I mean? And then it's like, with the people that I did get and um, the, the friends that I did get, 
like it, it would be something that was like kind of temporary or short lived um and then when i was younger i never lived in a place long enough to even keep friends you know like how some people are like oh i got my best friend that i grew up with like i really don't have that i can't say that that's what i have you know what i mean um i mean i wish that I could say something like that, you know, people are like, oh, we've been friends, that's my best friend for 10 years, or over 15 years, and so and so and so and so, like, that's a blessing, and, it, and it's nice to hear, you know what I mean, but I have not had the privilege to experience that, um, so in this season, it's like, I had to get to a point where I came, <laughs> I had to get to a point where I literally came in agreement with God. And sometimes that's what we have to do. We have to come into agreement with God. We can't focus on what it is that we want. We can't focus on what it is that we think we need. But we literally have to align ourselves with the will of God, with his perfect will. We have to align ourselves with his purposes because God knows what we need. He made us. He knows what we need. He knows what's going to work for us now. And he knows what's going to work for us later. And he knows what's a good fit for us now. And what's a good fit for us later. And we have to trust him. So, um, in this season, I, I got to a point where, like, I needed to fast. Like, I just knew. I, I'm just like, man... I need to fast. Now, some signs that help me know, like, when I need to fast is if I'm very, very, like, carnal-like. And when I say carnal, I don't necessarily mean in a sense, like, worldly. But I would say in the sense of me being too in my emotions. When I start getting really, really just overly emotional, and I'm a dramatic person. <laughs> like anybody who know me, they know I'm pretty. Like I can be like pretty dramatic or whatever. And it comes from a real place, you know. But when I get to the point where I'm just overly emotional, when I get to a point where I'm just like on my couch and I just start crying and, and so like, okay, no, we need to do something. No, this ain't finna work for me. This is not working. So when I notice those symptoms, then I'm like, okay, I need to fast. I need to fast. I need to fast. I need to fast. When it seems like, you know, my flesh is trying to rise up and try to get the best of me um that lets me know i need to fast when i get to a point where it's like i'm having a hard time um controlling my anger or if i feel like i'm having a hard time um getting over stuff like if it seems like it's taking me too long to get over something then that's a sign bruh you need a fast sis you need a fast so little things like that help me to know um, when I need to fast, um, if it's something that you're seeking from the Lord, those things, you know, you can fast also just to hear what God is saying about whatever it is that you're seeking him for. Now, in the beginning, I would fast and I'm just like, man, Lord, like I, I used to fast for a few different reasons. So I was, I will say, I will talk about two of the reasons and then go into the third reason, into a third reason of why um for me it was important to fast so the first reason um for me to fast was because i wanted to be closer to god so whenever you fast that's that's a humbling of yourself um and i just i just wanted to get closer to god so sometimes when i fast i fast so that i can shift my focus so that i can draw near to god so that I can be closer to him, so that I can know him more. That's that's definitely one reason that I fast and that I used to fast even back in the day. Um, I feel like I'm gonna go into like it might be four, it might be four reasons for me to fast. Okay, I might even go into five. Okay, so that was one to get closer to god and to know him more that's one of the reasons that i will fast and that's one of the reasons that i will fast um my next reason is that um dealing with 
my background and dealing with my past and all the baggage and all the demons and all of that that came with me um especially or that i carried with me back in the day like literally talking about generational curses all type of stuff like that um just like the bible says some of these things they only come out by prayer and fasting so if i needed to be free from from some kind of demonic spirit if i needed something on my life to break then i would fast then I would fast. If I needed to conquer something, then I would fast. Um, because like I just said, the scripture that talks about some things come out only by prayer and fasting. So um, just to backtrack and kind of summarize, just kind of keep things on track. I'm a little tired, y'all, but I'm getting through this video, okay? I'm going to get through it. Um, so the first reason I was saying was to draw closer to God, to get to know him more. The second reason is for purposes of deliverance, to be freed and set free from uh, whatever um, evil or demonic um, oppression, or to break generational curses, to break the powers of the enemy off my life. Those are two of the reasons that I would fast. Another reason that I would fast would be to actually <laughs> i know this sounds funny but i'm going to be honest and i know it's not just me but i would fast to try to get what i wanted and now this type of fast i don't necessarily i don't fast like this anymore to try to fast because god i really really want this god i want this i want this so bad i want this so bad and if i fast for a good three days five days and i know you're gonna give it to me right <laughs> that was a reason that i used to fast until god had to humble my little self and help me to know that that's not that's not why you fast. You don't fast because you just really, 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 really want God to do something for you. You don't fast with the intentions of, uh, and this, hopefully I'm wording this right, but you don't fast with the intentions of manipulating God. And because I've seen how fasting works in other areas of my life, like with the deliverance and God breaking off, um, you know powers of darkness off my life and because i've seen how you know the, the power of fasting um will literally help me to draw closer to god and to get to know him in a real way and he just really just reveal himself to me and just bless me in his presence like you know i figured that okay so it worked for these things so if i need something or if i feel like i want something then all i gotta do is fast so, um, eventually I got to a point where I was fasting and I noticed that whatever it is that I was like praying for, I remember one time I was fasting and like I had this end goal and I just knew, I just knew I was so overly confident that this, uh, God is going to do this for me because this is what I want. This is what I feel like I need, right? God did not do that thing. He did not. Now, did he still bless me in the fast? Yes. But did he give me what it was that I just felt like I just really, really wanted and just really, really needed? Uh, he did it. And that situation or that time was really humbling, but it taught me something. It taught me that I cannot go to God just to try to get a handout. Like, I can't fast just because i want god to do this for me and i want him to do this for me by this time and if he don't do it for me and he don't do it by this time then you know like it like it is just just sad you know I'm trying to watch my words but god had to show me that um when it comes to fasting that if there's something that you do want, the purpose for fasting is not to try to make God give it to you. But the purpose for fasting is to see God's 
point of view on whatever it is that you want. So it's like, no, I'm not just fasting because, God, I want you to do this for me. But, God, I'm fasting because I need to know what you think about this. I need to know if this is something that you want to do for me. Um, so, yeah. So my purpose for fasting um, kind of changed. So it no longer was, God, I'm fasting because I, you must do this for me. And then it changed to, God, what do you want to do for me? Do you, what do you say about this? What is your opinion on this? Um, what is your perspective on this? Then that became, like, my reasons for fasting. Um, my next reason for fasting is, what was it? Uh, I kind of lost my, my other reason. Uh, but another reason for fasting is just to humble yourself to humble yourself that's what fasting is to humble yourself this is important because when we fast and we humble ourselves we are saying God look I know this is what I think I know this is what I want. I know this is how I feel about it. I know that this is where I am. But Lord God, honestly, like, I'm going to let it all go so that you can show me the way. It kind of ties back into the last one. Like, Lord God, what is it that you want for me? Like fasting to humble yourself so that you can get out of God's way. Fasting to humble yourself <laughs> so that you can get out of God's way. And I had to do that too because sometimes, um, like I was saying, like um, how when I know that it's time to fast, if I'm being just like overly emotional, when you get to that point where you're just like overly emotional, like you are literally in God's way of whatever it is that he's trying to do because you are not um, being sensitive to a spirit and you're just literally operating off of how you feel and what you think and what you think about how you feel. <laughs> like It's crazy. It's crazy, y'all. It's crazy. But that's, that's what we do sometimes. So when it comes to fasting, we got to fast to like humble ourselves. We really have to fast to humble ourselves and say, God, not what I want, but what you want. Not my will, but your will be done. God, I'm fasting because I want to get out of your way. I'm fasting because I want to come into agreement with you. So these are some reasons um, that fasting is very important. Um, and then the Bible goes on even further to talk about how we fast um, so that people will be healed, to set the captives free, and all of this type of stuff. These are reasons that we fast. You are already know, and well, some of you might know, um, just even with the story of Esther. They fasted those three days before she went before the king, her husband, when she was not summoned to go to him um, on behalf of her family, on behalf of her people, on behalf of her nation. She went to the king. She risked her life. But she didn't do that before she fasted. You know, so when she did that, when she fasted for those three days, when they had the, the, the goats and the lambs and the, the cows and all of their sheep and all of that stuff fasting with them <laughs> to save the nation and to deliver the nation, like, God literally did that thing. He did that thing. He did it on behalf of them, um, on behalf of that people. He did it to set them free. Um, so that's what God does. Like, through fasting, um, 
is very, very, very real, very uh, effective. But you got to have the right reasons, like I was telling y'all about earlier. You got to have the right reasons. You got to have the right motives. And that's really with anything, not just fasting. That's with anything. So um, I said that to say that um, over the last 30 days, and I kind of want to say like 35, maybe 40 days, because I had already been just like fasting and then I I um, did a 30 day fast with Revelation Church um, and the, the fast was about like, you know, like receiving victory and stuff like that. Um, going into the fast, I just totally just cleared my whole plate, you know what I mean, um, of anything that I just wanted specifically for myself. And I just focused on God. What do you want from me? What do you want for me? And um, I'm just like, Lord, just your will. Your will. Your will. Um, so that was my primary focus of the fast. Um, and also, um, I was fasting because of my family, man. Like my bloodline, you know, my, my my grandmother's bloodline for whatever it is that God wanted to do for our family and for however God wanted to move in my family. That is why I was fasting. That is why I was fasting. And um, I was looking at the scriptures. I, man, I was looking at a few scriptures and like whoo, uh, um mm, 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 mm. in the book of psalms it was talking about a few things uh i was in the 42nd chapter i got i got my bible out y'all so i was y'all if y'all see me looking down that's why and excuse my attire tonight because like literally i'm in <laughs> i'm in pajama mode <laughs> I'm in pajama mode. Oh, excuse me. I'm in pajama mode because I really didn't plan on getting on here. I didn't. Um, but as I was in the word, I'm just like, man, Lord, um, like I hear you. So this is this is something I, I probably need to share. So um, this uh, I wanted to talk about these uh, few scriptures because um, like to me, I feel like it, it helped me. It helped me, and it, it and I can relate with it. I can relate to it just even um, during the fast that I was just on. I mean, I'm off of it now as of today. Hey, I'm back in business. Um, but um, there were times during the fast, and I'm just like, man, like forget this. Like I may as well go eat, you know. Like, and I felt some type of way. Some days I was upset. Some days, like, I was just over it. I was just over it. And it's not so much um, due to the sacrifice of it, but everything around the sacrifice. Like, still, you know, getting, getting my bills. <laughs> you know, still got the creditors calling. Like, st like these things were kind of like trying to plague me you know what i mean and um just trying to you know figure out things the best way i can because you know i have to figure things out not just for me but for my son i'm a mother you know what i mean and i'm just not no any kind of mother i'm a good mother so everything that i do and everything that um I have to do like I have to consider my son you know absolutely I consider him so some days during the fast it was a little bit tough or challenging or discouraging I don't want to say discouraging but honestly some days was discouraging not the fast but just like I said everything around the fast the, the tests during the fast the trials during the fast um they were 
they were tough but I'm just like man I just have to keep going like I just gotta keep going I have to keep things in motion like I can't stop you know I gotta keep moving I gotta keep you know keep moving forward you know what I mean and that was that was the goal and I'm just like, man, and it's just honestly, it seemed like closer to the finish line of the fast. <laughs> it seemed like the harder it got, like you would think that like, oh, well, I'm 28 days down. So, oh, I got this. No, at day 28, I'm just like, oh, I did at least 28. So let me just go ahead. <laughs> let me just go ahead and eat this Big Mac or something, you know, like it was really tough. But, um. I just try to keep going. I just try to keep going. And I mean, I fasted so many different times. And I remember times where I definitely broke the fast. You know, and sometimes you feel really discouraged when you break the fast. You just feel like you may have let yourself down, like you let God down. But even with that, whatever sacrifice that you did give, God honors it. He honors our sacrifice. He knows our capacity. He knows he knows our capacity. He knows it all. He knows all of it. Um, so, you know, we can't really just be discouraged about it or beat ourselves up about it because, uh, excuse me, because God knows um, my battery is a little bit low. So I'm going to try to kind of get, get to the meat of this thing. Um, so uh, with this fast, with the Revelation Church, they called it the victory, 30 days of victory. So they would pray different prayers specifically about um, different things in our lives and stuff that we would focus on throughout those 30 days with the ultimate goal of victory. So um, the scriptures that I read, and I literally just read them today. It's not like I read them and meditated them through the whole 30 days. These are what just came to me. But... Um, one scripture says, why am I discouraged? Why am I so sad? It says, I will put my hope in God. I will praise him again, my Savior and my God. And it says this scripture at least three times in the whole, in, in the chapter. At least three times. And the fact that it, it kept repeating it just lets me know that it was this is something to pay attention to so when i read scriptures and they get to repeat and stuff and it's like the same exact thing then i know it's something that we need to pay attention to pay close attention to so for me um when it's saying why am i discouraged and this is psalms 42 um, verse uh, 11. I mean, it's like a few of them in here, a few verses that, like I said, say the same thing, but Psalm 42. But it says, Why am I discouraged? Why am I so sad? This is a new translation um, version, a new living translation. I'm sorry. Um, it says, I will put my hope in God. I will praise Him again, my Savior and my God. So going through this this scripture right here, remember I told you guys that I was like discouraged. I remember those times where I'm just like, man, God, oh, what do I do? Like, Lord, what do I do? Like, what do I do? Like, how do I get through this? How do I navigate through this, Lord? I need answers. I need solutions. And it's like when you don't have those solutions right then and there, when you're praying for something and you believe in God for something, and and even if it's stuff that you know that God wants to do for you and he promised you, but it still hasn't manifested as of yet, like it can be discouraging and you don't you don't know what to you don't know what to do. You don't know how to handle it. So during my discouraging times and it was times during this fast where I got up because I was trying to get up at a certain time every day and it was certain times like where I may have gotten up and like the fire of the Lord was just all over me <laughs> then it was times where I got up and I was just like God just thank you I'm tired but I'm up 
Lord, thank you. <laughs> you know, at least I got strength in my body. It might not be as much strength as I want, but at least, <laughs> but at least I got some. At least I can lift my hands. I can lift my voice. Um, so it's like I had times where, like, it was a complete compare and contrast, even with the prayers. But I'm just like, God, I just got to keep going. If I could just keep going, man. If I could just keep going. And it really wasn't off of my own strength. The Lord knows it. And this kind of leads me to my next thing. Um, because dealing with the whole topic of victory, you know, whatever you need victory for in your life, whatever I need victory for in my life. Um, I was reading Psalm 44. And when it's talking about victory, one of the main things it's reiterating, and remember, if it's repetitive, if they say something over and over again, that means you need to pay close attention to it. So it was reiterating the fact that, like, victory comes from God. Like, we, we don't give ourselves victory. We're not responsible for, you know, giving ourselves the victory. But it's something that God gives to us. Now, like when I say this, when I say this, it reminds me of other scriptures in Psalm that talks about how um, pretty much a, a watchman that watches, um, he labors in vain if the Lord doesn't watch. Or it talks about another scripture that talks about a man who builds a house he labors in vain um, if the Lord doesn't watch over it or guard the house, you know. And I think the other one was talking about if uh, if he if he guards the house or he watches. But yes, pretty much to the, to the same effect, those uh, similar scriptures talking about the same thing. So the scriptures that I was reading, it says, uh, and this one, I honestly, I'm going to... I'm going to try to read the, the key scriptures. So it says, They did not conquer the land with their swords. It was not their own strength that gave them victory. But it was by your mighty power that they succeeded. I'm talking about it was by God's mighty power that, was, that success was possible. Um, it says... It was because you favored them. Man, come on. Sorry, y'all. <laughs> I'm getting stirred because this is so serious. But it says, it was because you favored them and because you smiled on them. He says, you are my king and my God. You command victories for your people. You command victories for your people. Only by your power can we push back our enemies. Only in your name can we trample over our foes. It says, I do not trust my bow. I do not count on my sword to save me. It is you who gives us victory over our enemies. It is you who humble those who hate us. Oh God, we give glory to you all day long and constantly praise your name. Y'all, remember I just told y'all that victory is given to us. And it's all because God favors us. It's because of his grace. It's because of his mercy. Everything that we have, every, every battle that we've won, it was not due to us, but it was because of God's grace and God's mercy, God's favor on us and i think this is where the whole uh works thing come into play is because um and, and i mean you know i come from a holiness sanctified pentecostal church apostolic like i come from that church and um i i, I do respect the doctrines and the teachings i do but sometimes when we focus more on us trying to trying to be saved um or be holy 
um, on our all own ability. Like that's that's where we kind of go wrong when we don't depend on God's grace. We feel like we can do it on our own. We fail to realize that we can't do it without his grace. We can't do it without his favor. We can't do it without his mercy. When it comes to our enemies, when it comes to our foes, those who, and the scriptures in the Bible that say, they who seek after our souls. When it comes, when it comes to them ones, those ones, <laughs> and excuse my vernacular, I, I can speak correctly, but I'm just talking right now. I'm just letting it out, okay? How it comes is how I'm going to say it. But when it comes to those who seek after our soul, our enemies, when it comes to the victories and the oppositions and the challenges, we can only overcome by God's grace. We can only overcome by his mercy. We can only overcome by his favor. Like there's no other way. God literally gives us the victory. And then this one scripture, it says, you command victories. It says God commands, he commands victory for his people. Man, y'all, look. If I really go into detail about some things, just even about this <laughs> being in this season that I'm in. Man, the fact that because of God's favor, because of his hand on my life, because of his call, because of his grace, he moved the people out of my life. He repositioned people in my life. Like God did the moving. God did the intervening. God did the removing. God did all of it because of his favor because of his grace, because of where he's trying to take me, because of his love for me. Like, God loves us so, 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 so much. Like, he's... God loves us so, so much that he's not going to just allow us to just self-destruct and when I say this um, I say it with intentionality because when it comes to that like God God will intervene and when you really love him he will intervene and he will give you victories that you haven't even asked for. <laughs> and in some cases, and I'm going to be honest, he's going to give you victories that you probably didn't even want. You could have been in your situation. <laughs> you could have been in your mess. And you could have been content and enjoying the pleasures of your situation and the pleasures of your mess. But the Lord had to snatch you. <laughs> Hey, he had to snatch you out. He had to move some things. He had to move some people. He had to move and rearrange and reposition in your life. Man. He had to give you victories that you did not even want for your own self. And I can attest to it because he's done it for me. He's done it for me. God has done it for me. I can't, I can't say that, well, I fasted, so this is why the victory came. Because it was times where I didn't fast. And I, I was content. I was content. And I wanted whatever situations I was in to be a, 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 a long haul type of thing. But the Lord said no. Ah, glory. 
but God intervened. And then it just goes back. You think about the prayers. Ah, you think about the prayers that you pray way, 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 way back in the day. You think about them prayers when you just like, Lord, intervene, you know. Lord, like, I love you so much, God. You know, Lord, help me. You know, your will, your will be done. I just want your will in every area of my life for the, my, for the rest of my life, for my whole life. And, and God, he still hears those prayers even if you stray it does not mean that he erases the prayers that you prayed. No, he knew what you meant. He knew the sincerity the moment that you prayed the prayer. Even though months later, even years later, you did, you slipped and slid and fumbled and bumbled, you know, like the Lord. <laughs> he still remembered your prayers from back in the day. He still remembered your mother's prayers. He still remembered your grandmother's prayers. Talk about grace and favor. And the Lord, he commanded victory. You didn't do anything to earn it or even to deserve it. <laughs> but the Lord commanded it. He commanded it. He commanded it. <sighs> so it's not, it's not of our own strength. I'm trying to live holy, trying to live righteous. It's not, it's not anything that we could do on our own. I remember trying so hard and when I would fall I would be totally devastated because I'm just like I gave it all that I could give it like I tried so hard like I tried so hard just you know I just even remember you know times being like celibate and then it's just like you fall and it's just like oh god what did I just do like what in the world god oh how could I let this happen? <laughs> like, and you just totally destroyed because you you thought you could do it on your own. And there was something that you could never do on your own. Like, Lord, like I ain't smoked weed in, in five years. How did I let myself get that stressed out to where I needed a joint? just like oh, God y'all there's nothing there's nothing that we can do on our own we can't do it without God's grace without his mercy without his favor without his power he literally commands the victory. I'm going to go ahead and pray. Dear Lord God, we thank you so, 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 so much, Lord, just for being so faithful. We thank you that you command our victories. God, even when we did not want to be victorious, even when we did not want to be free, God. God, we thank you for our freedom in you, Lord. We thank you. Hallelujah. Oh, God, we thank you for victory. We thank you, Lord God, for your grace and your mercy. God, thank you for your compassion on us, being compassionate towards us. 
Thank you for loving on us like only you can. And right now, we repent. God, forgive us for ever trying to do any of it on our own, Lord God. Forgive us for trying to do anything without you, God, in the name of Jesus. Forgive us for trying to do anything of our own strength and of our own uh, uh, capability and our own accord. God, forgive us. God, have mercy on us, Lord. Right now, we relinquish all control. And Lord, oh God, hallelujah. Hallelujah. We fall back so that you can take control. God, we align with you. God, we humble ourselves to you right now in the name of Jesus. God, we agree with you. Even if it hurts, God. Even if we don't understand it, God. Right now, Lord, oh God, we come into alignment with you. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. And oh God, we just ask that you would have your way. That you would continue to command victory in our lives. Father, in the name of Jesus, God. And we thank you for victory right now in every area of our life. Oh, God, we thank you for the victory. Hallelujah. In our family. In our home, God. And over our finances, oh, God. We thank you for the victory right now. In the mighty name of Jesus, we give your name the praise, the glory, and the honor. Rebuke the devourer for our sake. In the name of Jesus, bind the hand of the enemy that comes against us right now. In the name of Jesus, oh God, have your way in us in the mighty name of Jesus. God, we need you. We want you. We love you. We say yes. Man, that's what it all boils down to is a yes. If there's anything that we can do, it's just to tell you yes. So, Lord God, we tell you yes tonight. We tell you yes tonight. We say yes. We say yes. God, we say yes. Yes to your will and yes to your way. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Completely yes. Is our cry. In Jesus' name. We pray, amen. Amen. <sighs> Guys, just be encouraged. And know it's by his grace and his mercy, his faith. May his favor, his grace, and his mercy be with you and upon you in a special way. In Jesus' name. All right, y'all. Have a good night. Bye.